many motorcyclists, myself included, kickstarted their riding journey on a Honda Rebel, and there's no need to part ways when craving more power. Honda's Rebel lineup offers a progression from the 300 to the 500 and up to the 1100, providing riders with a seamless upgrade path as their appetites for bigger bikes grow. Last year saw the introduction of the Rebel 1100 TDCT, a bagger-style cruiser, expanding the range. The T in 1100T signifies touring, bringing along additional amenities like a batwing fairing and saddlebags boasting a combined 35 liters of storage space, ample enough for a few days' worth of clothes and personal items. The fairing sports a short windscreen, with options for taller or shorter screens available. While the standard setup caters to solo riders, provisions for a passenger seat and foot pegs are readily available. Color options for 2024 include metallic black and matte armored green metallic, complementing the Bordeaux red metallic of the 2023 test bike. Introduced in 2021, the Rebel 1100 derives its power from the liquid-cooled 1,083 cubic centimeters Unicam Parallel Twin, adapted from the Africa Twin but tailored for cruiser demands. Generating 87 horsepower and 72 lbft of torque, it falls slightly short of the Africa Twin's output, yet delivers peak torque at a lower rev range, 4,750 rpm versus 6,250 rpm. With a 270-degree crankshaft, the engine emits a V-twin-like rumble, employing distinct camshaft profiles and ignition timings for each cylinder. One optimized for sub, 4, 000 rpm power delivery, and the other for higher revs. Offering four ride modes, rain, sport, tour, and customizable user mode, it allows riders to tweak throttle response, traction control, engine braking, and, on DCT variants, transmission shift points to suit their preferences. Like several other models in Honda's lineup, the Rebel 1100 offers the choice between a six-speed manual gearbox or a six-speed automatic dual-clutch transmission (DCT). The DCT option is quite popular, constituting around half of the sales for models equipped with it, such as the Africa Twin, Goldwing, and NC750X. With DCT, riders forego the clutch lever and foot shifter, simply disengage the parking brake, engage drive, and hit the road. For those craving more control, manual mode is available, allowing riders to use the left side paddle shifters to navigate through gears. In 2024, the Rebel 1100T comes with the option for either manual or DCT transmission. My encounter with Honda's DCT during this test marked my inaugural experience with automatic motorcycles. Like many others, I harbored concerns that such a setup might detract from the riding thrill. Adapting to it indeed takes some time. Yet after traversing over 1,000 miles aboard the Rebel 1100 TDCT, I found myself appreciating its merits. The allure of DCT lies in its ability to let riders focus more on the ride itself rather than fretting over gear shifts. Negotiating urban streets becomes smoother without the need for constant gear changes, allowing heightened attention to traffic while relieving the left hand from clutch lever fatigue. During leisurely rides, there's ample opportunity to soak in the scenery. And when craving more engagement, manual mode with paddle shifters offers precise control, particularly on twisty roads. Each of the Rebel's four ride modes presents adjustable settings for power, traction control, engine braking, with further customization available in user-configurable mode. In automatic mode, the display indicates shift points, providing a clear visualization of how each mode alters the riding dynamics and simplifying the adjustment of preferred parameters. Additional amenities include cruise control and a convenient USB-C charging port beneath the seat. When parking a motorcycle with a manual transmission, I typically leave it in gear to prevent it from rolling. However, this isn't feasible with the Rebel 1100 TDCT, as it automatically shifts to neutral when turned off. To prevent unintended movement, there's a parking brake lever located on the left side of the handlebar. While setting the parking brake is straightforward, releasing it can be a bit cumbersome, requiring the rider to pull back on the lever while simultaneously pressing a button, necessitating the use of both hands. Consequently, when the brake is released, there are no hands on the handlebar, necessitating the use of the right foot on the rear brake pedal to prevent the bike from rolling, especially on inclines. Although it takes some adjustment, it becomes second nature with practice. 
The suspension system of the Rebel 1100 comprises Showa components, featuring a 43mm non-adjustable fork with 4.8 inches of travel at the front and adjustable preload rear shocks with piggyback reservoirs, offering 3.7 inches of travel. Braking power is provided by a single radial mount four-piston front caliper with a 330mm disc and a one-piston rear caliper with a 256mm disc, both equipped with ABS. Additionally, the selectable torque control system, which includes three levels of wheelie control, adds to the safety features. With its high, mid-mount footpegs, the Rebel 1100 boasts an impressive lean angle of 35 degrees. The bike's dimensions include a 59.8-inch wheelbase, a wet weight of 520 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 3.6 gallons. However, considering its touring potential, a larger fuel tank would have been beneficial. During testing, the low fuel warning light typically illuminated around the 110-mile mark, with an average fuel consumption of 46.4 miles per gallon, providing approximately 167 miles of range. Seat height has always been user-friendly on Rebels, and the 1100 maintains this trait with a remarkably low seat height of 27.5 inches. As a shorter rider at 5 feet 1 inch, I appreciate the ability to firmly plant my feet on the ground. Nevertheless, the footpeg position of the Rebel 1100T necessitates a somewhat cramped sitting posture, exerting pressure on the rider's spine and causing discomfort after extended periods. While not anticipating the comfort levels of a gold wing, a cruiser styled like a bagger would benefit from a more ergonomic riding position. Nonetheless, a brief rest at a scenic spot or gas station rejuvenates me, allowing me to eagerly resume my journey. Although I encountered discomfort with the riding position during extended rides, navigating twisty roads on the Rebel 1100 TDCT was an absolute delight. Its nimble handling and lightweight design made cornering effortless, while the engine delivered robust acceleration exiting turns. Particularly on challenging routes, I relished the transition to manual mode, engaging with the paddle shifters for seamless gear changes without the hassle of clutch engagement or throttle modulation, enhancing agility and speed. Setting apart the Rebel 1100T from its standard counterpart are the fairing and saddlebags, transforming it into a more practical option for overnight ventures. The fairing effectively shields against wind, safeguarding the torso and hands. With ample storage provided by the saddlebags, I managed to pack essentials for multi-day trips. However, I found the closure mechanism of the bag somewhat finicky, requiring extra effort to secure. Nonetheless, the lockable, top-loading design offers convenience and security. While the enhancements on the Rebel 1100T may not elevate it to a full-fledged Turing machine, they suit my preferred short-duration trips perfectly. The added luggage capacity obviates the need for a backpack, while the fairing ensures prolonged comfort during extended rides. In addition to its practicality, the Rebel's spirited engine, impressive cornering clearance, and lightness allow for spirited riding as I approach my destination, a luxury not afforded by bulkier bagger models. In terms of compromises, this setup strikes an ideal balance to cater to my requirements. Moreover, with the dual-clutch transmission, I can devote more attention to enjoying the journey, unencumbered by frequent gear shifts.